Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother, Advis, back with another installment of more interviews, a.k.a. memoirs of our real experiences. And for today's interview, I have a dope brother as well as a vicious MC, a samurai in the dojo, doing this thing with these lyrics and these bars in the pen. Got the brother, Nate the Great, for today, representing, of course, the East Coast. But as we're getting the interview and things all set up, Please, y'all let me know. Again, if y'all have any questions, throw them down in the comments, as well as if y'all are intrigued or wanting to know more about Nate the Great, please go and follow this brother on all social medias. Instagram is going to be set in here later on, as well as all other Insta- um, his social medias will be shared, as well as follow his brother on Spotify under the name of Nate the Great and much more but as the brother is coming in and getting ready we're going to again i'm just playing some music and as everybody else is coming through and doing their thing so shouts out to everybody that's up in here right now man um big flood in the building i see you um um elson i see you in here peace and love proving grounds i see you peace and love as well as selfish hour my boy camel i see you peace and love good to see all y'all in here again we're here for the brother nate the great and we're going to be doing our thing and have an interview for today. So with that being said, let me go ahead and bring the brother in right now. So we can get you up and going, y'all. As well as I'm playing the album in the background, you'll get to know a little bit more about that as the interview continues. But again, if you have any questions you want to share with us as well as know about Nate the Great, please put them down in the comments. Yo, what's up? Yo, what's good, brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Man, it's all great, man. Good, it's all great. You see, I'm just playing, but I appreciate you, brother, man, finally being able to get you in here because, man, you, I've anticipated and wanted this to happen, man. But... Yeah, hello, man. Like, we, I had, we had to make it happen somehow. Definitely, man. And if y'all don't know, again, this is the brother Nate the Great, man. Go follow this brother on, like I said, all different platforms on Instagram here. Since y'all are here right now, as well as for those later, you'll see it. Please follow at Nate the Great. There's more. We'll put that there. Nate the Great on 313. As well as, again, if y'all have questions, put them down as we go through and commence through this interview. But before we start, brother, is there anything, again, you like to share with everyone as well as if you have any questions or concerns for me before we start? Why are you so fire? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I appreciate that, man. Um, I think it's because of all the people that's around me. So you, you're included in that. That's why I'm fire. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Man, anything else? Uh, nah, let's get this uh, interview rolling. All right, brother. I'm with it. All right. Before I do do that, too, as well, man, how's everything been, man? How's the day been? Uh, the day's been going good. Um, uh, getting ready to go to work in another few hours because I took somebody's shift. <laughs> man, my boy working hard. If y'all don't know it now, he is definitely doing his thing, man, regardless, to keep this pushing. Yeah, for those man, that brother. work the overnight shift, for those that work the overnight shift, you know. And respects, respects y'all, man. I I love my sleep, bro. <laughs> I love my sleep, bro. But man, respects to you. But with that, bro, first thing I got for you, man, for those who don't know you, and this is their first time experiencing you and getting to know who you are as a person as well as, as an artist, um, tell us a bit about yourself in the background. Oh, uh, man, uh, Lyrical underdog from a small little island in Queens, New York, <laughs> known as Far Rockaway. And um, a little bit of background on me. Um, like, you know, grew up an only child, um, you know, a single mother, a uh, single grandmother, basically the only male in the household. Mm. Um, like, you know, my dad wasn't really a part of my life until he came back again into my life full time, like, while I was like way. 2021. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So me and him are starting to reconnect again. We're starting to um form that bond and come to find out I have a whole lot of siblings on his side. Yeah. Wow. I'm like the second youngest. 
Wow. Yeah, so, um, a little bit of background on me. Um, you all want to know how I got into music? You you already just, like, stepping right into that. So I guess the next question <laughs> to flow right into it, brother, is, um, again, when did you start writing songs and making music? Uh, this was about, I would say, 20, this would be 2014 going to 2015. Like, late 2014 going to early 2015. This was, like, while I was still in high school. I mean, I was writing a little bit in middle school, but I wasn't taking it completely serious. I was still, like, you know, getting used to it. Because before yeah. I started songwriting, I was a poet at first. And then mm. as I transitioned on to, like, high school growing up, yeah. it manifested itself into songwriting. So I basically made that smooth transition from poetry to rapping. Awesome, man. Okay, you said this was mostly high school. Yes. Okay, man. See, I'm starting to I'm starting to see a lot of trends here with a lot of the folks that like not only are very dope lyricists but just artists in general. I'm yeah. I'm digging it. Okay. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, of you doing that transition from a poet to an artist making your music, um, what was your first rhyme? Or a song that you can remember, or even add to think of. Oh, the first the, what the first rhyme that I, that I thought of. Uh, shit, <laughs> lose yourself by Eminem. Like I had that song stuck in my head religiously, especially mm. when I was in elementary school. I was like six or seven years old. You know, damn well I should not be watching that movie. <laughs> oh, bro. So I had the sneaker. So I. Whatever it would come on on the on the regular TV channels, like yeah. I would be sitting there watching it like crazy, watching like the the, the final scene when yeah. Rabbit is battling Papa Doc, and I memorized that whole verse like religiously. <laughs> that's one of the movies that also inspired me to to get into music. Mm. Okay, as well as all right, what was your first rhyme that you've ever written? Or a song you ever written? The first song that I ever written was um, a song called "It Has to Be Reality," because it at first it started as a as a poem, but then mm. it it slowly turned into a song. Yeah, I transformed I transformed it into a song. Yeah, me rhyming over a new Jabez instrumental. Shout um, out to new Jabez, rest in beats. It, it, yeah. It, the song, the song that was rhyming over, it was called uh, "Another Reflection." No reflection, bro. Another tell me reflection. why I love that beat, bro. But yeah, man. Yeah, and um, and I wrote that. I had wrote that um, you know, in the wake of losing a classmate that had mm. unfortunately lost his life due to gun violence. Mm. So this was, yeah, this was a twenty. This, this had to be my sophomore year. Just had to be in my sophomore year of high school. Wow. I wrote that because, like, bro, that hit everybody out of nowhere. Everybody was just going through it because he was he was a beloved um person. Like his mm. name was uh, Isaiah Isaiah Magic Lee. Um, like everybody loved him. He he was a a dope basketball player. Mm. Like, he was supposed to like he was supposed to um go even higher. From what, from what I heard. He was supposed to go even higher. I think I think he wanted to go to college for basketball, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, I, he wanted to go to college for it. So it's unfortunate that happened. So I wrote reality in wake of that, you know, to pay awareness and also pay tribute to him in the uh, in the way. Mm. That's that's very admirable as well as just another a great way to again express your thoughts and your feelings on a situation and be able to share that with other people and you know them also feel it at the same time if you know if you got to share it with everyone yes and, and yeah if we did the, the memorial when we did the uh, man, when we did when we did the memorial I'm not gonna lie it, it really hit me it, I had a like fair enough because of it. Because it's like, damn. Mm -hmm. I even like I even 
I hugged his mom and like his, I literally heard his mom said thank you for, for even just being here for all of us. Mm. Man, thank you for sharing that and you know being being open to you know add that along your journey and, and share that it it's a very important to be able to to show you know through the ups and downs and things of the sort that does happen that comes in the lives to know that you know you support you be there for people and just your presence and even if it was just again you knowing other person and you taking your time to be there it it, it does a lot just yeah. from the mom saying that to you man so you know, much respect to you for that, and and thank you. Thank you, anytime, man. And looping more into that, because we've gotten more into to the high school side, and we haven't got to the present, which we're gonna get to the present. Let's go a little bit further back now. And next question I got for you is, who was Nate growing up as a child? You know, uh. They growing up as a child, he was at first I was a brat. I'm not gonna hold you, I was a brat. <laughs> like my mom used to spoil me. My mom used to spoil me every single time I would be a little bit of a brat, but but like as, as I got a little bit older over time, like around like seven or eight, like yeah. I I chilled out for a little bit. Like, you know, I was a good like good kid, just you know, going to school and stuff. Getting good grades and all that it was reading yeah. knocked up. Um, also, like just still trying to figure out what I want, where I see myself in the future, like where that I want to want to become, and mm -hmm. um, what I want to do in the, in the occupation, like what I want to do as a career. Yeah, there were so many things I wanted to do. Like everybody knows, I'm an avid wrestling fan. So on one side, I wanted to like be a freaking professional wrestler. Mm. And, I, I love freaking science and all that. I wanted to be a scientist. And then on the other hand, I wanted to like, be an artist in some form. So I was just picking different avenues of which yes. what I wanted to be. Because I was like so out there. Because I wanted to like just do it all. I wanted to be everything. Mm. All have yeah. a uh, have, they all have a component of some type of creation. Yeah. Yeah, all of the middle way. And um, so I said, so so it was like, ah, my, my mom was like, I told her everything that I wanted to be. And she's like, yo, you got to stick to one. Yeah. Pick one. You can't do everything at once. You got to pick which career that you want. You got to stick with it. <laughs> yeah. And um, hmm. you know, what was it? Uh, and also, what well, I, I had in the back of my head, too. Oh yeah, I was deep in anime too, like because I found anime through my um my one of my older cousins. Yeah. Uh, yeah, through one of my older cousins, they Sean, and who also put me onto the video game Kingdom Hearts at a young age too. When the first one came out in two thousand two, so I was mm. deep in the video game like through him. So he plays a big influence on it. Yeah. If y'all don't know, look at his background. See all of the posters that he has right now. Well, right now, I'm in my, I'm staying with my girlfriend for the for the week. So like, this, this is her stuff. This is her stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. This is a whole breaking the fourth wall. My core audience or my core fan base that usually recognize my my regular uh background. This is not my usual background. Like, my whole background is like a Black Ops Two poster and my keyboard <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Nah, it's my this my um girlfriend's background. <laughs> she's, um, she's just like me. Shout out to character who's watching this as well. Mm, and who's literally outside the door. <laughs> dope, dope, man. Okay. I thank you for sharing that, man. Is I'll add to add to the question. What was one significant memory in your childhood that has either pushed you, impacted you, or made you really think about what you're going to do in the present, in the when future. I, uh, when I performed, when I performed in Broadway for the second time, 
Mm. And the reason why I said the second time was the first time it was I was a part of a play in middle school called What's on This Island. I was the second the second main role. Mm. I don't know if you heard What's on This Island is a very very classical and underrated uh play. Uh, I was just I was the main I was like the second main role in it. Yeah. And then we went we took a trip to, to Broadway because mm -hmm. we had to perform a scene. We had to perform a scene from the play that we was doing. Yeah. So that was my first time ever being on Broadway and mind you, my first time ever being on a big stage like that in front of a large capacity. Mm. And that moment right there was like, Whoa, whoa, this is like un freaking real right now. I'm literally in freaking Broadway right now. And who, who would know that fast forward, damn near my senior year, yeah, my senior year of high school, I would end up performing again on Broadway. That's super dope. And how I ended up performing the second time, so um, one, of, one of the, uh, not freshmen, freshman, so I think sophomore, one of the sophomores that, that I was, like, friends with, um, definitely, she needed, um, another person to help help her write this song talking about the American Revolution. Because yeah. this was where Hamilton was coming out. This was when Hamilton was running big. But those okay. who don't know what it, what the uh, musical Hamilton is, I highly advise you to go check it out if you have Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Um, so I helped her write the song because she needed, she needed a rapper on there. She needed a songwriter mm -hmm. on there. So she reached out to me one night like, I was just sleeping, and she said, hey, uh, I am doing this project uh, for our U.S. history class for our American Revolution project. Like, do you mind uh, if you help us, like, with the song? So I said, hey, all right, I'll do it. So boom, wrote my verse on the spot, gave it to record it, handed it to her. And then next thing you know, my U.S. history teacher hit me up and be like, hey, guess what? I got some good news. You're coming with us to uh, Broadway. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and, he, and she was like, yeah, you coming with us to Broadway. You coming with us to perform. And I was like, oh, my goodness. What the hell? <laughs> Yo. Wow. Bro, and I ain't going to love. I, I, this is the first time I'm talking about this, too. I messed up my lines twice on stage and then I, again that's how nervous i was i was so freaking anxious because mind you not only was i anxious but i yeah. didn't memorize the whole first word for word which yeah it's me off even more and then after i redid it a third time because i memorized um i memorized it at the time because i did acapella yeah and the crowd Right after I finished, the crowd gave me a bigger round of applause because it they understood, they felt where I was coming from. Mm. And I went back, I went backstage, I had my, my head down, I had my hands to my face, and I was like, Oh god, no, 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 what the hell? But everybody was telling me, yo, like, don't don't even stress it, because this happens to everybody. So like just look at this as a learning experience and just you gotta you're going to come back here and you're going to be 10 times better. You're going to be stronger yeah. if you ever come back to a stage like this. So that right there was a big um, experience for me. Mm. And thank you for sharing that. That's pretty dope. I mean, you go from being in plays and then after that writing for and then getting into a play and then being from a poet to an artist, man, it's like you literally, all the other things you were talking about, I want to be this, be that, be this. You was you was definitely getting experiences to figure out what you was going to do and how oh, great yeah. and how great you was going to be. Oh, yeah. Which, speaking of that, the next question that I have for you, because, I mean, it's on my mind. I always got to ask and, sh and share this and, and know about this is, speaking of, again, being great, tell us the significance of your name and how did you get it? Shoot. Well, everybody, everybody of course, started calling me Nate in middle school, for short, because my actual name, for some reason, for some people, it's hard to pronounce, 
or they just be messing it up for the hell of it. Yeah. And I got to correct them every time. And it got annoying to me. So I told them, eh, just call me Nate at this point. Just call me Nate the Shorty. Yeah. And then, um, and then the great part, Now y'all thought now y'all add that part in because it rhymed, but also <laughs> but also um because like I wanted to like tell my like give myself like an affirmation. Like give mm. myself that that upper motivation, that upper echelon of of like tell yourself, hey yo, like have some some faith in yourself, have some belief that that you can be more than good. You can be Great, you can be greater than anything. So yeah, that's how the the name Nathan Great came to be. Man, that's man, that's very dope to even to to know about too. Is that really your name in itself? Every time you perform, it's an affirmation. And I mean, once y'all also get to hear his music and what he puts out. Like, you start off a lot of the tracks with Nate the Great. Like, this is your affirmation. Like, I'm about to be great. Y'all listen to this track. Like, yeah. it, it it makes a lot of sense. And that's I'm, that's super dope. I'm glad that you did share that, man, and that I knew. Now, yeah. speaking about more of that greatness, using that as an affirmation and, you know, continuing on this journey, I have to ask you, there's so many different genres in this world. We all love all different genres of this world. Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. But in particular, next question, what drew you specifically to hip-hop? Nas, Lupe Fiasco, Eminem, mm. um, the Beastie Boys, Wu-Tang mm. Clan, Natural Element, and... Like I would say, <laughs> all the way up to high school, it would be J. Cole, Kendrick, Logic, um, Clear Soul Forces, of course, shout out to my guy Novelist, um, Earl Sweatshirt, and, and who else? Who, 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 last one, that, uh, last one. Uh, oh my god, there's so many dope artists. Uh, you have somebody, know. there's somebody in there saying, High King is saying, um, oh my God, that, that is, this, yes, and, and I, oh, it, I'm not gonna lie, John Cena played a little bit. He played a little bit of a part because it's Thugonomics character. I don't know yeah. for those big wrestling fans, but John Cena had a Thugonomics character. He had like a rap gimmick where he was just wearing throwback jerseys. It was back in like 2003, 2004, whatnot. Yep. Before he got popping, yeah, he had a rap gimmick. So that kind of, I go a lot. He. He he finished that last one for me. He, he added on there a little bit. <laughs> Dang, dope. All right, what about all those artists really drew you then into hip hop? Was it the lyrics? Was it the the flows? Was it the production? The their attire and how they looked? What was oh it? my god! Oh my god! I sw- first off, it's the lyrics in my opinion because me, you already know I don't play when it comes to lyrics. Like I have a huge love and huge respect for lyricism. Yes. So it was the lyrics is what was what they were saying that drew me towards them. Yeah. And like just just the impact of, of, of their words, like just the importance of linguistics and the and the, the, the unique twist of putting like different rhyme schemes together. And like mm-hmm. just the way how they how you put in the rhymes, how you, how they structure their verses, like how they just how like an artist just analyze their, their, their wall mm. and be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to paint this corner, I'm going to paint this corner with this, then I'm going to fill this whole section with whatever. Mm. And also the flows as well. Also the flows. Because it the, the flows is just damn near ridiculous. Like, I don't know if you have ever heard me do it, like, her hallelujah, but there's a, a certain part where I switch from a slow pace, and then I switch it to a fast flow. Fast I know when, cause, and the influence from that, it comes from guys like Tech Non, LF, Twister, Machine Gun Kelly, Logic, Eminem, of course. And, um, yeah, it, it's also the flows as well. And it, it also helped me not only, you know, 
explore different ways to, to deliver my message. It yeah. also taught me like how to also enunciate my words more clearly. Like, if I ever go into that bad flow, if I ever go into that pocket, yeah, it would it would help me help me get the message more clearer. But in a in a way that where the listeners gonna be like, oh shit, hold on, let me run this back because what the hell did he say on this one? Yeah. Yeah, as well as to give it some spice, cause yeah. it's it's great. It's great to have a a pocket on a beat, yeah. and you just got your your natural pocket and rhythm that you're in. But if yeah. you can throw people off sometimes, and you get with different cadences and flows, it grabs the attention back in. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, also and the I'm story to my too. Also storytelling because I love story. What they you know about me? I love storytelling. Mm. I can I can tell. I mean, I'm there's there's great examples on your project of you telling stories. You know, like I and just in just the way that you know how to to weave your words and your lyrics to create an experience for the listener is is amazing. Like it's so dope. Like just to go back and play that and be like, this man took his time to put this all together and to display it and give it to you. And then some of these things, if you are an avid listener of lyrics, you'll go back and try to figure out these, you know, different Easter eggs, or you say these in these inferences in between what's being said in the lyrics. Cause some of these titles I was looking at, I'm like, yo, I'm about to look some of this stuff up. I'm like, Oh, you, he mentioned that. Oh, he said that. Or you give it away at the end and be like, yeah, man, I'll just wrap this whole um, episode and this for you. And you know, all of these different things. But I think that's, I think that's dope that again, that's another way of you. I'm reaching um, not only your listener, but what you want to display and give and you do it in such a great way. Yeah. I, know, I keep I keep saying great. I guess again, that is the word for today's interview. It is great. You are great. Nate is great. Take <laughs> it with y'all. The person that's watching this is great. So. <laughs> appreciate it, DJ. Appreciate you to follow. Thank you. Oh, Much love. DJ that's my guy, DJ Skip. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All these people together. Yeah, yeah. DJ Skip and Hype King Mizzle. All those those guys that are joining. That yeah, we're also part of a collective called the Goats Incorporated. Uh, oh. like, I've been, we've been going strong for ever since 2019. Okay. Yeah. I have to figure, you know, look more into that. Um, speaking of some more hip hop, what are the elements of hip hop? MCing. Mm hmm. DJing. Mm hmm. B boying. Mm hmm. Uh, I would say graffiti. Yes. Exactly. And speaking of all of those elements, and then there's there's so many other excellent ones, y'all, but we're going to stick with those. Knowledge being the other fifth one, that's one that's hiding there, the fifth element that just hides at times. But out of those elements, um, which element do you embody the most? I don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, it's especially this one, but which element do you embody the most? I embody the most. I would say... Graffiti and MC, those are the two main ones. Mm. And why? And why those why two? Say, and reason why I say graffiti, and here's why I say graffiti, because one, even though I'm not, it don't have to be just spray painting a damn wall or or a train. Yeah. <laughs> For those that you know, it was it was just like you just damn this spray painting the whole canvas like within like a composition. Yeah. It's more than that. You mm. know, like me. Like whenever I pick up a grab my my pen and my my pad, I'll be like, okay, here's what here's this picture that I have in my mind, and I'm just gonna explain this through the words, and that's literally me doing my old version of graffiti. And I like that. MC, yeah, and the MC aspect, of course, I love the crowd. I definitely love the crowd. Even even though at times I can be a bit antisocial and a bit of an introvert. <laughs> I still love the crowd. It's I don't know, it's the Leo in me for some reason. But I freaking love being in front of a crowd. And just mm. like being like, okay, oh okay, you you got bars? Okay, you got this and that? Alright, I'ma show y'all what I got. And then boom <laughs> I love controlling the crowd. Like I'll be like in front of a microphone and I'll be like, okay. This is this is my moment now. Yeah. This is the phone, this is my power. This is my superpower. 
again, embodying and taking and using not only the Nate the Great as your affirmism and your and your motto and your saying just to affirm you, but yeah, when you know it's time to go, it's time to go, and you step on stage and you step and you be ready. I feel that. You're yeah, definitely, I, definitely. I don't, play, I don't play when it comes to that mic, bro. I don't play around when it comes to the, to the microphone, bro. Like, I'm a whole problem. I may look like a, a, a laid-back, quiet dude in the background that, that's, that's just over there reading his damn anime and stuff like that. Nah, nah. Mm. I'm a whole problem. You ask my homies, like, right next to me, and, and, and they go look at me like, oh, is this he rap? And he's like, no. That dude's our secret weapon. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you you affirm, yeah, whatever. You affirm the stereotype of the quiet dude in the room being being the most um, secretive when it comes to skills. Oh yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, quiet giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I be t I be telling people. Uh, I be usually be telling people, yo, don't mess with quiet people because I'm quiet people. You never know. You never know because they could be the next. They may be chilling in the cut, but they that person right there is gonna be the next big thing. Cause you never know if you keep like stereotyping them or pulling them like in a certain box. Yes. Boom. Speaking of putting things in boxes, spraying words and lyrics onto a canvas and being a whole problem. What is your creative process and how do you write and get into your workflow when you're creating? <laughs> she says, always says right before we get on stage, just another day in the office. <laughs> uh, that's, the only, that's, yeah, that's my catchphrase before we, before me and him ever perform or if I'm on a solo stage. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, um, repeat your question. So what... We're gonna start the first one. So what's your creative process? So how do you create? How I create, okay. Um usually I, I usually set up I usually set up of course the verse, but I ask myself, how do I want to start this off? Mm -hmm. And I pick the word that comes into mind and then right after I pick that word, I piggyback off of it mm -hmm. like for the next like four like next four lines, and also whatever, whatever word I ended with, I started yeah. off on the beginning. That's the a method I started using. That's one of the methods I started doing. I started doing doing um I don't know. I love my PSL like this and that. I rap this and that and that and that. Yeah, so like that. <laughs> mm. so that's a prime example. Whatever word I start, I end, I started with. Mm. I ended up continuing on the beginning bar and then transition on to the next line and then it goes all the way to the end of the bar. Okay. See, you got you some um some plug and play. You got you a yeah. method to help plug plug and play. I'm with that. Um yeah. So you got how do you, so how do you get into your workflow to create? So I know sometimes for some people they have to either be in a quiet place, whether they're in a studio. Like, what is your method to help you get in the zone to focus um, besides just being another day in the office? Basically, my, wherever I'm at, basically my environment, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll get inspiration from just being uh, isolated in one spot. I, wherever I go, it don't matter whether I'm on a date with my girlfriend, it don't matter if I'm hey, just spending a day with bros or just being at the house by myself. It's I always, like, be inspired whatever because my inspiration just hit like that. Mm. Hey, I blame my insomnia for this because I, I work <laughs> non stop overnight. Yeah. <laughs> I blame my insomnia for it because it plays a big role in it. But yeah, wherever I go, inspiration strikes at any time. And whatever that strikes, I always have a certain beat in my head. I always had like a certain flow or punchline in my head. Mm. Like, it, hits any time. Like, it doesn't matter whether I'm watching anime or just playing the video games. Inspiration always hit whenever. Like, on random occasions. Mm. Inspiration hits on random occasions, y'all. Y'all, again, take that and interpret any way that you want to. Shouts out to the brother, um, Grow, 
um triple seven up here the lucky sevens up in here you know uh, yeah. see so, yeah, i had to have somebody know night, but the job i do it right uh, there it is y'all uh but speaking into that before now we get into talking about the project which we got in the background psylocke playing um yeah i want to move to another section of the interview that i like to do which is called fun questions all right what's up um they may i don't know if they're gonna be fun questions for you i know they're fun questions for me because i like liking it <laughs> um doing this stuff and <laughs> For all those who are watching, as well as who are watching this later, you are more than welcome to join in on these questions and put your responses to these two along with Nate. That so you can really... see if y'all put up on the same thing with Nate or not. But again, this is my segment I like to call fun questions. Hopefully they're fun to y'all, but it's fun to me. Hey, I love interacting with y'all. I love interacting with the viewers. Yeah. So come on, man. As well as if y'all have any questions as y'all still here right now, please put them in the comments because then I can add them to the interview as we're going on. So Get curious. If not, DM the brother and ask him a question. Tell him how great you saw in the interview, et cetera, et cetera. Do, do what you got to do. Don't uh, worry. I'll respond and follow back. I'm not Hollywood. I actually communicate with y'all. <laughs> there it is. First fun question I like to do is, would you rather? So I got a would you rather for you. Okay. So listen close. These, these, I'm not, they're not big, but listen close. All right. Would you rather live your life as an anime of your choosing with multiple seasons but have a tragic story that prevents you from finding fulfillment? That's the first one. First one. Okay. Or would you rather concentrate only on one of your ultimate goals in life, succeed, but lose out on other opportunities? Damn, damn, this is a hard one. So either you live as an anime, you have multiple seasons, it's tragic, but you find no fulfillment, or you focus on one ultimate goal, you succeed at it, but you miss out on other opportunities. I'm glad to go with the first first option, live my life as an anime, because I'm sorry, I, I live life with opportunities. I can't, I can't miss just one opportunity. I can't focus on one thing. I like going after other opportunities, man. I can't. So if I gotta die at the best, if I gotta have a tragic ending, then so be it. <laughs> so be it. Okay, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. You made me think right back to Eminem about the one shot, one opportunity. <laughs> this is everything you ever wanted. One moment. Ah, uh, man. Okay, I'm with that. Okay, man. Any of y'all? Y'all got other ones? I I probably would. Honestly. Honestly, I will go to the second one to be truthful with you. To be truthful why, with you. Why, why the second one? Um, for just to be focused on one ultimate goal. You don't know. I wouldn't know necessarily. It could be a, a great opportunity, but who knows if that ultimate goal allows for opportunities within that goal to still happen. So uh, you never know. You yeah. Gotta, I see the outcomes because you yeah. never know. If any other opportunities outside of that can lead to that ultimate goal. So that's why I picked the first one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, again, there's no right or wrong. It's just, again, the perspective on it. So I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Now, the second one that I got for you, I like doing this to, I'm not going to say test. I'm sorry, I love, I, my girlfriend's cat just came in here, so... <laughs> It is all good. Put the cat in the interview. Yes, yes. Um, hey, hey, Zala, stop licking my feet. Stop licking my feet. Uh, second thing I got for you is uh, finish this line. So it's uh, going to test a bit of your off the dome freestyle in the moment skills right uh, here. So finish this line. Uh, a dynasty revives the Oh, 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 I haven't heard that line in a while. I know which line you're talking about. Oh, God. Uh, but uh, I, 
live, but dude, I don't know the live. <laughs> oh no, this is oh it, I this was at random. I didn't even think of like this if this is a if it's a real line, I don't even know it. But this I'm talking about as in you create off of that. Oh, oh, this is my own be like, oh, this yeah. is my own. Oh. You just create off right. of that. A oh, dynasty so revives the a dynasty revives the legacy. Mm. Oh, okay. Real quick, too easy. Yeah. And a dynasty reviving reviving the legacy because. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a dynasty revives the legacy because because everything that lives on this earth is a must. A1. <laughs> A1. Okay. Boom. Again, for those who want to also get into it too, the line is a dynasty revives the and don't copy. We're not copying. No copy. Come and put your own. I was playing. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, I had to. Yeah. You see me on my, on my girl's cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you good. You good. You all good. And the next one I got for you, brother, is a scenario. And you have some choices on this scenario on where you want to take it. Okay. So the scenario is you're in a heated battle, whether if it is a rap battle, a video game, a sport, or a debate, you can pick any one of those heated battles. And you have a choice of one ace up your sleeve to help you win. What would that secret ace be, and what would be the outcome of the battle? Mm, my secret ace, my secret ace, what would be my mm -hmm. secret ace? It will have to be. And what battle is it? So, are we doing is it a rap? Is it a video game? Is it a sport battle, or is it a debate? Uh, I would have to say, I would have to say, um, not, not rap battle. A little bit of a rap battle. I would say rap battle. Okay. And my secret ace it will have to be my my knowledge of you. If you if I've been around you for too long. Mm. And a a um and a blows or punchlines that that I could think of to to decimate you. That's gonna be my that's gonna be the the heavy artillery. Mm. And is that off of freestyle, or is that a why you? Or is it part of the written battle? Both. It's part of both. Both aspects. Mm. Yeah. It's, and it's and a then hybrid. It's a hybrid of both. Mm. Then what will be the outcome of you having that ability to decimate based off of the knowledge you have accumulated on knowing the person or being around them, Mister Assassin? Everybody, everybody <laughs> in our circle will be like. God damn me, do I have to go in on him like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You just mad because I'm styling on you. Um but yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm with it. So we got that ace ability to be able to decimate. Again, it's the pin game. If y'all not paying attention, his brother is great with the pin game. So he gonna use it, whether if it's off the top, just like the dynasty. Or it's going to be straight up, I know much about you. Almost, again, and almost another reference <laughs> to the last Eminem battle. <laughs> yeah. This guy's a gangster. His real name is Clarence. Like, bro. And Clarence, he's a home with both parents. And Clarence's parents have a real, real good marriage. Real good marriage. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. I will say, bro, I'm with you on that, too, because oh, my mom played that movie so much, especially those last battles, that I know all of those last battles. It's it's so, wow, man, it's hilarious. But all right, bro, I'm with that. Okay. And the last fun question I got for you, and we'll, run, we'll go right back into and we talk about this album, this project that you dropped, yeah. is... My baby. What is my yes. baby. What are three things, in your opinion, what are three things people forget to cherish? Lyricism. Mm. The 
authenticity and and the impact and connection to the listener. Mm. Especially why that last one? Because you got to remember, not a lot of people say, oh, artists don't have a responsibility for the listener and what they do outside, outside their lives. And that pisses me off a little bit because we technically do have a responsibility as as lyricists, MCs, artists, rappers, or whatever. Yes. Because it's our duty to make sure that the listener feel what we are saying or if they relate to what we're talking about. Or if in general, if they enjoy the, the, the track or not, we still have an obligation to to let the listener in on on like mm. how we feel and if they can connect to it. Or if they don't connect to it, they can just enjoy the music for what it is. And also, how we impact, how our, what we say basically impacts them with a day. Yeah. A lot of people don't think, because a lot of people don't think about it. A lot of, a lot of people say, oh, oh, you're an artist. It don't matter if you're local or mainstream. You don't, yeah. like, kid, like, don't worry about the listener. Just do music for you. Yeah. Yeah. I can do music for me, but at the same time, if I'm doing music for me, then how am I supposed to reach out to someone who could be feeling the same way that could yeah. relate to what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's the that's the thing, you know? So Man. that yeah. So I feel like the connecting with the listener is definitely important because you never know whose day you can uplift, like who can, who can you inspire in a dark time because I can say for example, bro, just there's so many times where, where I just, I literally be sitting back at, at home, just chilling out, just listening to why I be saying my music. I be like, no, I really said this. Like, I really uplifted somebody. Mm. You, know, you know, even times when a few a few people that I know say, yo, like, yo, your music got me through some real dark, heavy stuff. Mm. Mm. So, like, I, I don't play around when it comes to the listener because I'll make sure Listen to leaves with whatever I'm saying. It don't matter if it's an anime reference or it don't matter if it's an affirmation or whatever. Yeah. Like, I want to be like, yo, I got you. Even though I ain't here with you physically, you can still hear me sonically. <laughs> mm. Man, that's so truthful. And that's and that's very powerful point that, you know, you made with that because in some ways and shapes and forms, like you said in prior, is that, yes, we do get in this to, you know, in a way to serve ourselves in a way, to be able to express ourselves and, you know, share our perspectives out to people. But that underlying impact of not knowing that your lyrics can really reach out and um, touch someone and help them, you know, go, you know, accomplish a goal or, you know, get through a very rough time. And it, it, be, it comes, you know, very humbling to hear that. Uh -huh. So it's very, very, very true. Man, that's what's up, bro. Mm. But that was my segment of fun questions. Hopefully it was fun for you. It was hopefully fun for for everyone that was there listening. But I appreciate you joining in on that and, you know, adding your thoughts on it. It was fun. It was fun. I would love to go again. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and the goofiness comes out, y'all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I may sound intellectual and stuff, but behind the scenes, I'm a real dumbass. <laughs> uh, hey, man, you live your life by your philosophy, man. You do you. That's what it is at the end of the day. And that's why people love and connect with you the way that they do. <laughs> and that's why I love everybody. That's why I love everybody. I do what right. I can do. All right, the serious part, the serious part. I'm just playing. Um, all right, so next part, y'all, we're going to get into the main thing. For those who are just coming in and not knowing, this is the brother, Nate the Great. Again, his name is also just a, a model and an affirmation of being great. So Nate the Great in here, please. Go check this brother Nate out great. on all. Nate, 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 Samurai. Nate, Nate the Great, a.k.a. Samurai. Nate, your friendly neighborhood, Samurai in the works. There it is. And you gonna, you can follow him on Instagram. If you're right there, you can go and click on that arrow at the top by where you see more and then his interviews. And you can go and follow the brother there as well as I'll have all other social media, Spotify, et cetera, on there as well, too. Please and also subscribe on YouTube. We're going to get all of that going and popping. What you got? I'll follow back. Don't worry. I'm not Hollywood. There it is. Now, 
to get into the main part of this interview, y'all, and for those who got to see it or don't see it, we're here talking about the brothers' drop of an album. Yes, sir. A.K.A. called Here's Some Great Raps. Yes, we got the word great in there again. Don't forget, because they're just not some good raps. Not some okay raps. They're just not par, subpar raps. These are some great raps. On them. Yeah, if, if I did, ass. I would have beep, beep, beep. All of these great raps in here, <laughs> man. I had to do it. I didn't have it with me right now. Um, But from you, from you to tell us, brother, tell us a bit about Here's Some Great Raps. Yeah. Or tell us okay. a lot. Do what you want to do. Just tell us about some great raps. Here's some great raps. Here's some great raps. It's just me giving y'all some bars like no other. This is piggybacking off the last album that I dropped uh, back in 2021, No Plan B, which is definitely another project y'all really need to check out. Mm. So this is piggybacking off of No Plan B, which is like part of this manifest trilogy that I created within my first e my second EP Blossom, my mm. first uh, like project that I put on streaming services, uh, Grand Motivated, which I dropped on my birthday in 2020, and No Plan B, which is like the third and final like that's which was No Plan B was being the no the the, the manifestation of it all was just me mm. going like okay I feel like I'm evolved and found myself as an artist on what I want to achieve. And, like, this is my goal. I want to take it there. Now, with no... With, with, um, with the Handsome Great Raps, that was me saying, okay, I done got serious on this. Now, it's time for me to take it to a whole nother level with just giving y'all some bars. This was basically my off-season. Y'all mm. take on your off-season? This is my off-season. Handsome Great Raps was literally my off-season. Because all the songs is not that long. They're like in the one minute to two minute mark, with the exception of, I think, Yatsuha and Dialogue being the longest. And and also, um, Go Go, you, yeah, I'm not going to be Go Go, with my guy, uh -huh. uh, my guy's D Lasty Master in uh, Born Majestic. Yes. Oh, gosh, yo, I want to, oh, God, I want to talk about Ant, just this whole album. Okay, so. The end, the first, it starts off with an uh, intro from, from, of course, my girlfriend, Alice, the character. That's that call. One second. Alice. You come back for a second. Let's come back for a second. <laughs> yes, you're about to get a cameo from my girlfriend. That's it. I was trying to call. I I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry to wake you up. Oh, yeah. For those that don't know, this Special is Alex's guest. character. Hi. It was How also a part of my album. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Just a little sleepy. <laughs> she I, just got, I she came like... in from work. Yeah. Mm. We just, it's like a little tag team. So he goes at night and then I go at day. So when he comes in, I go. When I come in, he goes. And it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to wake you up. <laughs> Love you too. All right, <laughs> but yeah, so she is um of course she starts the song out the the um project out with intro, you know, just giving me affirmations of that I needed. Yeah, because I was going through a very difficult time because twenty twenty one right after I dropped No Plan B, I was going through it mm. personally. But then, but then when I met her later on in the year, like around October, October that's when we met. Yeah, like, you know, she gave me that. Like, she gave me that affirmation after we got together, and she sent me a voice note. So I decided to put that as the intro, which then leads on to one of my personal favorites, which is Lil Diamonds. That's crazy because that's also one of the favorites I have down on my list too. But continue, because Lil Diamonds, Lil Di can we talk about that Cowboy Bebop sample? Sample that? Okay, okay, okay. Can that, we okay. talk about the Cowboy? Bebop staple in the song. It goes like little diamonds. And I chopped up the piano. I pitched it up a little bit. Okay. And then that we hear that little die, little die, little die, little die, little diamonds. And like it gives the listener that, oh, okay, so he about to take a sip for a ride. 
You better take yeah. it to a, a special treat on this one. And for a whole two minutes, it's just me wrapping my ass off, basically picking back where I left off on uh, No Plan B, basically saying, okay, I done told y'all, like, my end goal, this and that, and third, yeah. but now, when I finish it off with the bar saying, uh, hope y'all enjoy the sound, it literally is me saying, yeah, I'm about to take y'all in for a ride on this one. Yeah. Like, I hope y'all enjoy what I'm about to say. Like, we ain't talking no meaningful-ish. We ain't talking about no sentimental-ish. I'm giving y'all bars. I'm giving y'all hip-hop. Yeah. And so, and then what's the next one? The second one, it transitions us to Velvet Sky. Yeah. Which is, uh, Tyler was in the track, you know, named after one of my favorite uh, wrestlers, Velvet Sky. Mm. Uh, and then, and of course, that is like just a one minute, like, lyrical exhibition. Damn it, has to, damn it, this whole album is a lyrical exhibition. And then it leads on to the third one, which is. Laguini. Laguini, of course, with my guy, Jay Jensen. First, originally, I had dropped that as a single in 2021, but it mm. went on the radar. A lot of people, it went underneath a whole lot of people's radar. So I wanted to be like, no, no, Laguini. But how heavy that beat goes, yeah, that Rav Tui sample, yeah, it was like, no, I have to put, I have to put this on the album. And plus, Jay Jetson is featured on my last one, so it's only right to bring him back in for this one. Mm. It was mm. only right to bring him back in for this one. Uh, and then, of course, of course, the transition, that smooth transition from the greedy all the way to my, honestly, my best one today, my best song today, one of the best was on the album, Psylocke. Mm-hmm. Oh Bro, God! You produced all of this. I produce all of it, it's with the exception of two tracks. Okay. Wow, man. In other words, I produced them. Oh, the Skylark, bro! That song goes. Sick. If you want to see me live, I want to hear y'all say that hook religiously. I got your brain information with the Skylark. I got it right into your mind for your blind spots. That whole hook is a freaking punchline if you really listen to it. If you really listen to it, like break it down. Oh, I got your brain in submission with mm-hmm. the side lock. Mm-hmm. I got you in a chokehold psychologically and referencing side lock. Mm-hmm. I'm inside your head. And then I'm got to right into your mind to your blind spots, meaning I'm deep into you. I know each of your weaknesses. So I can break you down literally. Mineral to mineral. Why you have, have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Why you gotta do that? To I don't know. Why you gotta do that? I don't know. Why you listen, gotta put, I don't want my why are you putting my brain in, in you know in the side lock, bro. I'm not trying to be in the choke on thing. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I'm a listen, I'm a samurai. Forgive me, okay? <laughs> Hey, I can't help it. I can't help it. If my story is just ready to slice up, damn near whatever. Mm. Yeah, and that was a novelist. First off, we gotta yeah. give a second. Can we just take a second to, sh- to give novelist his props? Oh yeah. Because this dude, mind you, he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. I mean, I, I reached it at the time. He yeah. was doing the time, features. He was doing these. Yeah, he was doing Black Friday features, which means he was giving this kind of features. For them. And I was working for Amazon at the time. So I said, I really want to get novelists on this song so bad because if you listen to the beat, it yeah. literally sounds like something novelists will rap we'll be, on. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, take it. If you listen to his catalog, like Cerebral Apex or um, Dilla Instinct, like those, that literally sounds like it would go on either one of his projects. So I said, you know what? I got to get novelists on this. I have to reach out to them. And mind you, I already knew. I already had met novelists, too. Not mm. this week, but through quarantine. I had met them through quarantine on a, a, a virtual workshop. It was a virtual mm. hip-hop workshop that we did. So I found them all. Yes. I connected with them all there. Did my virtual because we was doing uh, lyrical exercises. And, like, 
he was impressed by what I was saying, and I was following him for a hot minute. The following him ever since high school, it's like Clear Soul Fortress is one of my favorite groups of all time. They're, they're mm. all my and novelist, I reached out to him, and he said, "Okay, this is how much I'm charging for a feature." Gave him the money because I got paid that following week, and within like two, three weeks, like he had, he had gave it to me. The only reason why it was taking so long was because a lot of people were saying I'm up for features. Mm. Yeah, and like that's you know, it, it, that that still remains like a, a special place in my heart, man. The fact that he literally took the time out to just collab with me. Was, yeah. Like something that's so special to have one of my favorite artists that yeah. I was listening to in high school be on the same song as me. Yeah, uh, that, 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 that definitely is something, something special. And yeah, shout, I, out. <laughs> shout, shout out to Novelist, yes, yeah, man, man, that's dope, that's dope, bro. And it, it was, it was something again that at that affirmation helps. And the way yeah. you just putting that out there and you saw the opportunity, opportunities came and again you took it. Yeah. And plus on top of that, a lot of people, a few a couple people in my circle know who he is. Yeah. But then they knew I had a I had a song in the vault with him. So when mm. I announced it, when I announced it um uh, right after New Year's, New Year's it yeah. was like How the fuck did you get Noblet on song? <laughs> yeah. Bruh. Yeah. Wait, what was your initial reaction? I don't know well, if you'll ever I, 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 Man, I was listening to Clear um, Four Souls like a while back, back when I was in high school too, man. Some of the world is yours and everything in it. Or there's no better time. Like, I I knew of. Not going to say that was fully deep. Right? Yes, on Yes, yes. I'm not going to say like I knew fully into it, but I was like, bro, I like I like his style. I'm like, who is this? And I started looking. And then he collabing with Megaran and then like a whole group of other folks. And I was just like, oh, yeah, this dude is dope. Like nine then, the yeah. So then literally, yeah, when I saw that and I was like, wait, I'm like, wait, how that? I was like, yo, how'd that happen? I was like, hey, let me listen to this. And no, I was I like, mean, oh, no, this I is no dope. Listen, yeah. I mean, no listen, listen. That's what I meant. My fault. <laughs> Yeah, man. So I was just like, "Yo, that bro." I was I was surprised, but then I was like, "Bro, shoot, I want to see what this sound like." This sound like I was listening to the beat already. I was like, "Ooh, this sound fire!" Honestly, I'm like, "Dude, not to even lie." When I first heard it, I was like, "Bro, imagine this actually being on uh, not a Marvel Capcom, but some type of also fighting game, you know, um, soundtrack." And I was like, "Bro." This this not only would it fit because of how the production sounds, but I was just like, bro, y'all just going in. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, yeah, him, yeah, because when I got that novelist feature, I think he said, okay, I got you. I was like, okay, I gotta go in. I really gotta go in. I can't hold back on this one. <laughs> mm. But man, yeah, I I was I was I was geeked for that when that when I saw that I went and I was like oh shoot, let me go listen to this whole thing and I will say bro yeah it's very catchy bro it was very catchy my man I'm literally once I went back to and I started listening to the whole project again and the song came up bro I'll be at my job over here got your brain in submission by the side like, like I was singing it all in my head bro like for a good while so you did you had my brain in submission bro singing that chorus while I'm at work man so it's very catchy. <laughs> Appreciate you know, the man. I, That's love. That's love, dog. Bro. But I mean, you got, again, there's a lot of stuff that you have that for me. Replay replay factor of this this project, thousand percent. I, I could play this wherever. Be truthful. Like, it almost fits any any area of whatever I'm doing. If I'm working out, that can help, as well as going on my way to work and the job. Like, bro, this the replay factor is, is great. And I uh, appreciate you, man. Like, yo, bro, like this, uh, bro, like I said, this album is like my off season. Like, I literally said, okay, I just want to, I just want to borrow everybody and just give y'all freaking punchline after punchline at the beggar at the beggar. <laughs> bro, it's like, very the, strong. Especially yeah. Lucky Seven, yo, especially Lucky Seven, the way that, that Elena Barad staple too, a lot of people don't know this. A whole, uh, I, I stapled a whole lot. I did mm. a lot of samples 
I did a lot of samples on this project. Mm. Bro, uh, you know how to pick. You had some really good sounds, and I like how you use a lot of um vocal samples and yeah. how you implement them on top of some, the drums that you that you put, bro. Like a lot of them was really dope. Um, a like Yachtu, yeah. for example. Yeah. Like Yachtu, the yeah. the Samurai uh, Shapeu track. Yeah. Now, that, <laughs> oh my God! So long story. So long story short, I was on a Samurai Shapeu marathon. I was binge watching that for a fifth million times. But mind you, I was, that's the first anime that really got me into music. Mm. The, the other two are Full Metal Alchemist and Ghost in the Shell. Ooh. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, and Yasuo came, up, came about. I was listening. I was actually watching the episode 15, Bogus Booty, when Fugin, Gene, and Fu, they, they got to a certain stop in their journey. Yeah. It was, of course, Gene, Gene is over by the rock just fishing for food for Mugen and, and food to eat. But yeah. while they, they over here clowning them, it'd be like, fish is the life of struggle between men and fish. Do this and you continuously get hurt. What is a Mugen? <laughs> and he found a pot of and he found a pot of gold and they'd be like, oh snap. Now we now we can buy something to eat. When in reality, the money that G found, it belonged to a a, a Freaking murderous crime lord who was forging money, <laughs> mm. and yeah, and 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 the um, and the woman that Mugen meets in the episode Yasuha, yeah, she was working in the brothel as a geisha. She was working as a geisha, yeah, and, and yeah, she was working as a geisha undercover, and she knocks Mugen out, switches out of of course her geisha outfit all the way to her regular. Degler outfit, yeah, to go arrest him. What? Well, I forget. I forgot the name of the of the of the the guy that was going after, him. but the crime lord. It was going after him, and Boogie got up and said, "God damn it, it hurt like a blood. because Boogie got knocked out. She knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, which explains the big ass book that he had on head his head about the entire episode. <laughs> And yeah, so so Yasuo was like, "Okay, you want to work together? You want to work together? If I do this for you, like, will you help me knock this dude out? Will you help me arrest him?" And he was like, mm -hmm. "Basically, he was wet throughout yeah. the entire so to help to help her take down the um the crime lord and to also get to the nitty gritty in the end." Yeah. But yeah. spoiler alert for those that ain't watched Samurai Shippuden. Um, Yasuo basically knocks Mugen out again, leaves them flat on a tree, like just to get picked up by Jin and Fu. And Yasuo literally said this verbatim at the end of the episode. He'd be like, who knows? Maybe after all this is over, like I'll come back and find you. Need it, which he's like, that's the love interest right there. That was yeah. his love interest, which is why in the end of Yasuo, when I say, However, in the end, I'll get to sleep happily. I mean, after all, that is the one to marry me. Yep. Man. And I mean, the way you did this, and it's, it's just funny how you, not funny, but it's, it's just a great way how you summed it up at the end and then let people know, man, I just spit the whole freaking episode of Samurai Shampoo for y'all. Like, it's, that's just very dope to have your interpretation on putting in, again, what happened as well as adding a little bit of your own uh, factors to it, too, so... Yeah, man, that was freaking dope. But yeah, like, as we got that, as yeah. we got that too, the brother in here, um, Day Off Music, had a question and said, Nate, did you recreate the beat from the second half of Soul Food 2 for Thunder Rosa Freestyle? Yeah, I recreated No, I found it. Okay. Uh, I found it again. Now, nah, I just found it on, on um, YouTube and just said, okay, I'm just going to rap over this one. So no, I'm not going to recreate it. And claim that as my own. That's not no. I'm not gonna do that. Mm. And I want to make a uh, logic on that one because number one, soul food. If you're if you're a logic fan and you listen to soul food part one, there is no way I'm gonna like re replicate and redo soul food part two because number one, I don't know what the heck what sample they use. 
I don't know yeah. what they would use for that one. And number two, it would be dumb for me to do that because then that would be me claiming it as my own. Then I gotta get into this legal battle. Then they ain't I gotta worry about them suing me, and I'm not gonna do that because I do not have the money for that. <laughs> and on top of that, I just want I, I want to give yeah. y'all stuff just uh, to give y'all just, just to treat y'all. Yeah. Um, but I will say on that particular track on Thunder Rosa, it it got the gold watch, don't it? Yeah. Yeah, you got the gold watch on there. I like because I heard when I first heard it, get him up. yeah, yeah, yo, get him up. I'm like, okay, and a little twist, twist and turn with it. I liked it, I liked it a lot, man. Man, yeah, because there's there's a wait, lot wait, why do people uh, what's the name? Wait, he said, Bluefe? bro, that's gold I'm watch or gold watch. Oh, I didn't, oh. no, do you know do you, that's off of that's off of um, the cool, that's off of the cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. I was that's, listening to it. Like, Come on, this piece sounds familiar. And then now that you tell me, I was like, oh, now I get it. Yeah, I got my gold watch and my gold chain with my. Yeah, that's wow. I didn't even know that. Yo. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know he said for Lupe. Yo, that's wild. Yeah. Knowing that Lupe is one of, one of your architects right there, too, when it comes to just studying, bro. Yeah. Oh, that is wild. Yeah, brother. Man. But um on top of on top of the um other songs on here, and it's very funny that it just um rolled up right now. Another one that I was just like, yo, I had to um run it back um real quick when I first heard it was Bullet Storm. I'm like, oh, yeah. bro, like I'm like, okay, uh, in my head, every time when I hear somebody like you were still spazzing on all the other tracks, and they caught me for other reasons. When I was listening to this one, I'm like, who made you mad, bro? <laughs> I was like, who made you mad? But, like, I went back, and I was like, bro, like, the name, the title definitely fits what you was um, doing. You was definitely spitting a bullet storm, bro. I was just like, dang. <laughs> so the name itself is inspired by the video game. It's inspired by the mm. video game. Storm. And... Why I sounded so angry on it, especially I think what was the line? What was the line that I said? Story said she was an into me, the feeling became mutual. mutual. That <laughs> now she's a no name, very in the wasteland, paraphrasing way that it's ancient to me, a fake fan. All right, now I'm gonna explain those that that part. Uh, there was someone that, that, of course, that I was like trying to talk to at the time. Yeah, like I gave her a compliment, I gave, gave her a compliment. I gave her a compliment and she uh he said, please stop. I'm not into you like that. And I was like Um I was gonna give you a compliment. That was it. And yeah. I that kinda of made me go a second way. And yeah. I said, Okay, oh okay, cool, cool, I got you. And I just put that line out there because okay, you you wanna do that? Okay, I I'll play that. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll, I'll put a little something, something in there for you. One thing you should not do is ever press off an artist. That's one thing you should not do. Oh, you give them fuel to the fire. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. And, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, and, the paraphrase, and the paraphrase blade that is anxious to me and faith fan, meaning my sword is ready to chop up anybody that, quote, unquote, supports me, that claimed that they supported me. Yeah. Where I say, You've been praying on my downfall ever since I started the journey. Yeah. And the rest of it, and the rest of it is just a lyrical gauntlet of me just saying, okay, y'all, y'all keep sleeping on me. I've been doing this for God knows how many years. I'm this is about to be my ninth year yeah. in the rap game. Close to a decade. And I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all gonna stop sleeping on me. Y'all gonna stop playing with me on this yeah. one. So Bullet Storm in my face. I slept on it for a little bit, but listening to it now, I was like, okay. Lyrically, I think this is also up there. I got to put this, like, at least number three or four. Oh, yeah, brother. I mean, you was, again, throughout this whole this whole project, it, it really was not only, like you said, a display of, you know, your, your lyrical prowess, but at the same time, your storytelling, as well as your ability to bring in the listener as you're you're doing you're hitting either with these punchlines 
or just with your vivid imagery, which was really dope. As well as your production on this stuff, bro. Some of the stuff I also was just vibing with, like, these are really great choices and sounds and melodies. And I'm just like, yo, who? I was wondering, first I was wondering, I was like, who, where did he get these beats from? And I was like, wait, I remember he did make beats, so that was something I was going to ask. And he was already saying, majority of not, yeah, out of just like, what, two of the tracks on here, you produced the rest? I'm like, yo, that's yeah. just, that's, that's, that's just dope in, in, in my head to hear that. Yeah, yeah. The, the the main ones that I did not produce was Thunder Rosa and Ye Ye. Okay. Oh. The only man. two songs I produced. But mm. the other ones on here, I produced. Beautiful, man. And, and speaking of that, the other ones that definitely caught my ear as well, too, brother, was, like I said, Lucky Seven. Um, Yin Yang definitely was a great way to end the project, bro. That was very strong for the end the project with. And then the one that caught my eye that made me laugh because I'm like, oh shoot, you know about them too? Um, in the clutch. Yeah. <laughs> in the clutch, bro. <laughs> I was like, yo, after I listened to this, I was like, somebody said it in the comment. I was like, bro, man, it's like, what if we send that to them and they could man, I could end up being one of their intros, bro. Yeah, I tried it. I I sent it to them. I made like a little compilation video with the song in the background and uh somebody already beat already uh, made Thank a song. I was like, oh, okay, but uh, yeah, what was I about to say? Lucky Seven, yeah, so Lucky Seven, that song goes, oh god, that Elena Baraz sample, that Elena Baraz sample that I used, I, I sampled uh, her song Fantasy, when, when she said, I could be a fantasy, and then I pitched it up a little bit, but I reversed it as well. I reversed it. Wow. And then I kept it up where it goes. Da, 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 da. And it gave it that. I, I said, yeah, while I was doing that simple, I said, you know, I got to put some crazy ass drums on this. I have to put some crazy ass drums on this. And then, oh, I did that. I had the drums, I had the punch, punchy snare to it. And yeah. And then just came up with the concept. I'm catching the lucky seven. Like I'm catching, I'm catching those blessings real soon. Mm. And my favorite part in that song, where like that fast flow, that fast part, right when yes. I start to pick up pace a little bit. Yep. For those that yeah, for those that had trouble following, it's the, I said it's a lyrical exhibition. I got you in submission. I'm willing every second, willing every single minute, recognize those degrees, and you better not forget it. Legacy written to make sure that everybody's in it. Mm, yeah, like, bro. I, yeah, continue. Oh, nah. oh, is it okay if I can demonstrate real quick? Bro, brother, do what you want to do, man. Like, like, of course, you hear me say, it's a lyrical exhibition that got you It's a mission, and I'm willing every second, willing every single minute, Reckon Dawson's with Grace, and Van Nuff again, like it's written, that makes sure that everybody in it. But when you hear it on the song, it goes like, it's a lyrical exhibition like I do It's a mission, and I'm willing every second, willing every single minute, Reckon Dawson's with Grace, you better not forget it, like it's written, that makes sure that everybody let go. Woo! Yeah, so I, I have to be like, okay, how can I say this, but have the listener be like, yeah. What the hell? What in the emblem is this? <laughs> oh, bro, it it definitely again it caught it caught my ear when I heard that. I was like, okay, he switched the flow real quick. I'm like, okay, let me try to keep up with him. And, and I even say too, I even say too in the following bar too. I yeah. said, switch it up now, listen up, switch it up, up now, listen, now listen up. up. Mm -hmm. So basically, you tell the listener, you make it ready, you make it ready, because the switch up coming and you don't even know it. <laughs> and man. Wow. But no, that was, yeah, that one, it was really, again, another another great addition to the track and to the album in, in, in total. And like I said, Yin Yang, I like your, your references to the different attributes that you just went through and then you were just giving your, your, you know, your thoughts and then your words and, you know, perspectives on each one of the attributes as you went through the track. And it, it it just it seemed fitting as a as an ending track. So for me, like I said, overall, like the replay factor on this is anywhere I'm going, I definitely know if I want to throw something on and I want to listen to it, this is definitely getting multiple plays for sure. Yeah, man. Like, yo, shoot. Like, like I said, like uh, from a production standpoint, I think this is like my best one. 
of a production aspect. Because uh, you got Yasu Ho with the Doja Cat sample that mm -hmm. literally sounds like that whole track sounds like a New Japan type beat. Then you got Gogo -Go Yubari with the with the Honey Drippers drum sample. Mm. Do you know how long I've been trying to use that drum sample and preach the president? Oh, I didn't know. Damn, Damn bro. That legendary drum sample. I've been trying to use that for the longest. I, I just It just took me a while to find the right sample. Dang, and then you, yeah, then you got the Cowboy Bebop sample or Little Diamonds. Then you got freaking, uh, what you call it? Um, you got ah the Alayla Barrage staple on Lucky Seven. Like, yeah, brother. Wow. Like, well this done, is, my whole G. Is like my, this is like my, my child. And like we already about to hit 30K on Spotify with this project. Congrats to that, too, brother, man, on, on the release as well as the streaming aspect of it, too, my G. One of the other things I want to ask... And again, to be showing of your time and um, respectful of it too, as well. Um, besides, how long did it take to to come up with the project to be done in total? What was one message or a main message that you wanted your listeners to get from the project? Let the haters keep sleeping, lawyer. Let the people keep sleeping, lawyer. Because once what you see, once they hear your evolution, yeah, it's gonna be it's either gonna be too late for them to get on, or it's still a little bit of time for them to notice the growth. Mm. Let them sleep. Okay. And also show that I can wrap my ass off, and that anything I got is better than your favorite artist. <laughs> Nate the Great. Okay. <laughs> I'm with that, man. Okay, brother. All right. But I got a few more questions for you. And then after that, make sure to, to plug in, share all of your information for people to know um, as this con you know interview is will be coming to a close. But before we do any of that, the next question that I do got for you um, is with all of those multiple passions that you had, experiences that you've done, um, whether yep. if it was on, um, you know, performing in Broadway without you knowing, writing, you know, yeah. songs for, you know, different experiences that you've you've had and just your overall creative process. What's your ultimate goal with your passions? My ultimate goal. Um, be, a well res be a well respected artist for, for the culture. Mm. Continue to impact and lead lead uh, people in my generation, and also just have a, a good. I don't even I don't even care if, like if, if if I get mainstream or or stay underground. Honestly, yeah, like I do. I have a successful career, like so I can like you know be a good be a good boyfriend and future husband, and just have my own family and just be a be a happy happy man. Be a happy, like, married man with a great, successful career. Yes. Mm. Man, that's dope. That's, again, a great way to wrap up and do a lot of stuff and put that all together. Not saying wrap up, we're done, but, like, as in, you know, yeah. to just uh, just put that all in a bowl together. Uh, again, it gives really a great picture of, you know, the graffiti of the art that you do put on the canvas or the tapestry that you're writing of, you know, what you want all those goals to be so man that's it's beautiful thank you for sharing that g uh, thank you for asking me. of course brother got to because they're always the why the why is so important to definitely have for your purpose and pushing you know um beyond is always to have that that anchor that center of you know why why do i do a lot of this for and ultimately where i know that can take me so of course yeah. i got to ask man all right, three more questions for you, brother, and we out. Um, 
The next one is an interesting one, and I, I do want to start asking them, um, a lot of artists and poets and people that comes on, says the Afro Samurai poster goes hard. Shouts out to my brother, Buffet Destroyer <laughs> in the building, man, coming through, brother. Man, much love to you. Funny thing is that I kind of find a li- found out um, about you a little bit, too, bu- through the brother, um, Buffet Destroyer. So, man, shouts out to my brother right there, too, man, from another. Yeah. Um, what's the artist, MC, rapper journey to you? Like, what is like the beginning, like a middle and an end result of how you would explain the artist, rapper, MC journey? Artist, rapper, MC journey. The starting point is, all right, the beginning, you saw as a grasshopper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your son. Shout out to Mr. Miyagi. You start <laughs> as the grasshopper. You uh, you, you don't sound too good. You don't sound too good in the beginning. Like yeah. you still trying to, you still get your feet wet in a, a whole different like pod. Yeah. Middle, you're st- you're still getting up there. You're still growing more as an artist. You got a whole lot more to learn. You got a whole lot more teachings and lessons that you have to go through. Yeah. Then the end. You finally reach that manifestation. You finally blossomed as an artist. You finally found not only your sound, but you're also able to not only adapt to just one sound, you're able to adapt to a whole other, a whole different horizon of different, of different, um, of different genres, of different sounds. Like, like for me, not only I do a little bit, not only am I in that boom back, yeah. 90s, Pack rap pocket. I'm also in a little bit of the R&B section. I'm also in the lo-fi section. Yeah. Also in the production section as well. Mm. Mm. So, so you, that, you, yeah. yeah, the journey to me. Okay, and I'm not, I know you kind of get alluded to it a little bit, but where would you put yourself on that artist journey right now? Um, I would say, I would say the end, like the end of the journey. Go ahead. In a sense, yeah, I would say I'm I'm like in the end of my journey because I feel like I'm still, I feel like I'm able to now adapt to any different sound now because I'm so in tune with the music because I've been doing this for so long. I feel like, okay, I think I'm able to write something to this. I'm able to adapt to this type of production that I'm not used to. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, Drill. Even though I detest drill with a passion, I have a few <laughs> cuts on it. I have a few cuts in my discography where I am rapping on those type of beats. Where mm. I did use at least two or three of them. Hell, I think Uno, I think Uno, which is like one of my popular ones, is a is a Latin like drill type beat. You you brought it up and it just started playing. I swear, every time I do an interview or something yeah. like that, the music just comes in at the right moment. But continue. Oh man, oh but yeah, that is yeah. like I'm so, I'm deep into um now I'm deep into uh whichever genre that I, I jump into now. Like who mm. knows? Like what day, what day I might end up on the alternative rock section. <laughs> Because funny, because funny story. Before I got to rap, yeah. I was deep in jazz and uh and alternative rock. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Give me a few which people. Also plays into my wardrobe, which also plays into my wardrobe. Like I'm wearing a freaking Van Halen shirt. Like I yeah. got like a ear beanie on. Like my, my freaking nose piercing. <laughs> he over here, Mike Shinoda. I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, bro. <laughs> or is that, or is that uh, Delaracha? Oh yeah, br- yeah, yeah, man. Okay, I'm with that, my man. Thank you, thank you for sharing that too, bro. Because I'm really wanting to get people's perspectives on you know the artist journey and the MC journey and what that looks like for them. So thank you for sharing that, bro. Um, next thing I got for you, bro, and it's a. Uh, twofold question on it and then i got the last one and that'll be it brother and i appreciate your time and appreciate you coming through and uh, being able to be on more interviews my g uh the next one i got for you bro is first part of it is what are your thoughts on defining greatness defining greatness Mm mm-hmm 
wherever you go, it's whatever action you you choose and the aftermath of that action hmm. or choice that you make. Hmm. And depending on the energy that you bring. So it, all of those together is how you define your greatness or define greatness for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Short, sweet. You impact everybody around you. That's also a main component. Mm. The environment. Yes. I hear that. Yeah. All right. What are your thoughts on making complex things simple? Make it complex things simple. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, sampling, I was terrible at it. But making complex things simple, you can look at something that, that looks like it's all over the place yeah. and that may look like it's advanced. But if you actually really scan it and analyze it, yeah. and you do, and you act, because mind you, not, not only am I a rap, uh, MC, I'm also a producer. So break down, do the science behind it. Yeah. And trust me, you're going to have your experiment completed. And once you have that experiment completed, that complete, that complex thing is going to be simplicity. And everybody's going to ask you, how did you do it? And be like, I made it simple. They're overcomplicated. I made it simple. Very true. And um, just a random to the side note to come back to what it what you were just doing earlier on, bro. When you was talking about again all those different aspirations that you had, bro, you just talked about being a scientist with production. So, um, in a sense, you are um a scientist when it comes to the way that you are producing these sounds and putting them together. So, um, I'm kid Nate knew what he knew what he wanted, and it's still still getting what he wants to do. Yeah, it just had to be, yeah, it was a creative aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had to go out there and have to, like, get my time. I got to just give myself some time to, uh, to grow, to yep. grow up first. <laughs> Man, but yeah, again, learning the craft and then figuring out, you know, the best way to, to really to um, get something down is just make it as simple as possible. Yeah. I, I feel it. Good. Man, well, I appreciate that, brother, man. Uh. Last question I got for you. I love to share it. I always share it with everyone because, again, a lot of he people's perspectives on this. This is a question that will be continue to be shared um, to the end of time. People will ask themselves about this question. But the last thing I got for you, brother, before you head out is when it comes to your music, relationships, you know, love and your experiences in life, is it the quality or the quantity? Quality. Why is that? I don't care how much stuff you have. I don't care how much stuff you have in your inventory. If your inventory sounds like... If it sounds like God... If it, no, I'm not going to say God. If it sounds not good, mm. then it's going to affect... It's definitely going to affect your legacy in the long run. Mm. So, take it... So, always take your time. Choose quality. Don't over play it with quantity. If you're going to fill it with quantity, make sure it has some great, solid, or decent quality behind it. Like, for example, I use these guys as, as an example. Griselda, mm. West Side Gun, Highway and Betty. These dudes be dropping projects damn near throughout the entire year. And each one tops the other one. Mm. So that right there. And also, our favorite, even Kendrick and J. Cole, yeah. they fell back like five, five to six years, and they they dropped classics. All examples everywhere. Yeah. So, so for anybody, yeah. So for everybody, I say choose quality over quantity because you want to make sure you have some good quality to look back on years from now, instead of looking at the quantity and be like, God dang. Like, I think I, I should, like, pace myself with this a little bit more. Yeah. So, mm. always, I always go for quality. 
that's why that's why I definitely take my time. All right. And there y'all have it, y'all. Again, this has been the brother Nate the Great. Um, brother, I wanna give you your flowers, appreciate you for taking the time out to be interviewed and to just share your thoughts, um, your perspectives and you know, your experiences with us, with me. And just having a um a dope time. So thank you for that, brother. And please keep doing what you're doing with your with your lyrics and your art. It is definitely appreciate it over here and for those who do listen to it later i know that they will appreciate it as well thanks man i appreciate y'all i appreciate you taking the time to to have, to have me on here before i gotta go to work um but like i'm um, shoot like this this right here is definitely um something special to me yeah and i mean that my birthday is really three weeks in like another two weeks on the mm. 29th i'm about to be your boy about to be 24. <laughs> oh wow man yeah, wow. yeah, man. So like, Marcus says, like, shoot, I just gonna keep putting in the work and and just keep repping for the culture. Just keep representing for the culture, man. Man, and much love. Glad to have you guys on this journey with me. Just glad to have y'all on this journey with me. And, until like we end up on that last episode, and then we all go our separate ways. So one day, maybe meet up again, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but the journey never ends. ends. Mm -hmm. Memories live forever. Bars. Uh, with that, y'all, um, any last things you would like to share with people, please plug all and where you are at and, you know, any last words or thoughts that you will want to leave with people here. Um, life can't hold you down if you're living happy. Mm. That's all I can say. Lead, lead, or oh, enter the best worker in the room and leave out the best worker in the room. That's First in. Hmm. First in, last out, y'all. And shots out yeah. to Shingle 2. First in, last out. Uh. <laughs> but with that, y'all, thank you again, brother, for being on here. I know, again, I'm with the framing of time. Y'all go check out Nate the Great on Instagram. Up here, you're going to see it. You know, Nate the Great 313. Um, as well as go check out Nate the Great on Spotify. I'll have all that information um, later on on YouTube and Instagram. You just go check out his, his page, and you'll get all of that loveliness over there. And wherever else, too, if you have questions, too, shout out. He said, not Hollywood. If you got questions, you're interested, shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot the, shoot the talks with the brother, man. Um, but with that being said, thank you all for coming through for another installment of more interviews, a.k.a. memoirs of our real experiences. And thank you, Nate the Great, for coming in again. And for all those listening, when it comes to more interviews, don't forget to continue going through and continue writing your memoirs and your experiences so that you can keep growing and sharing your life. But with that, y'all, thank y'all again for coming through for more interviews. We'll catch y'all for another one in the future very soon. And again, go check out the brother Nate the Great. You will not be disappointed. But with that, y'all, peace and one love, and we're out. All right. Have a good one, y'all.